You, you clicked? Yeah. Good evening, everybody. It's 7 o'clock. We're um, starting our um, select board meeting for Tuesday, February 22nd. And I am going to be chairing this evening because we have the um, top two officers that are on vacation or unavailable. So we're going to start with the um, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, let's see. First, uh, we're going to have some announcement and board openings. Hamilton Historic District Commission has one opening. The Capitol Committee has one opening. The Open Space Committee has two openings. We're looking for someone for the Hamilton Planning Board <coughs> Associate Member. There is one opening. The, uh, the Hamilton Affordable Housing Trust has one opening, and the Hamilton Human Rights Commission has one opening, but it is reserved for the Housing Authority representative. And now we're going to move to public comment. Is there anybody on Zoom who would like to raise their hand and we can call on you? If not, we're going to, let's see. <laughs> Do we see any hands? I don't see any. I guess we'll go on to um, selectman reports, please. And Sean, would you like to start? Sure. Um, I'm trying to think if I had a CPC meeting from the last time that I had this board meeting, uh, irregardless if it's redundant, I apologize. But a CPC meeting uh, where we uh, approve the, I should say we approve to bring the grant the town meeting for the community house. Um, they're looking to build a, I guess a, a patio for lack of a better word in front of the community house uh, and that will be in front of town meeting and I believe Jay Butler will be on at some point tonight to talk to some other CPC articles um, and the rec department um, where I think we're talking about scoreboard today uh, and also they have their catalog out and um, look at it if you have it and sign up that's all I have uh, before we go on I, I skipped attendance so oh. we do want to do a um, we don't have to do roll call. We don't have to do uh, roll call because they're here. Because we're as long as you call okay. it to order, you're fine. Yeah. Okay, great. Go ahead, Rosie. Oh, let's see. Hi. Um, let's see. I think the big thing this week has been, um, well, two things. The Master Plan Steering Committee had a meeting, I think it was last week, mm -hmm. um, and um, working on the survey. Slow, slow, but very... Um, very uh, nose to the grindstone kind of work. Um, got a good team, and um, hopefully that will continue to move along at a brisk rate. Um, the other thing, uh, I think the um, biggest time um, consumption this past week has been with the Conservation Commission. Conservation Commission has been working very hard at. Um, bringing forward a new conservation bylaw. Um, our town council has informed the commission that ours at present is uh, indefensible legally, so that needs to be done sooner rather than later. I, with town council, uh, almost three years ago, wrote um, a bylaw which the town is using as its uh, template and they're making some very thoughtful and necessary edits in that so um, that will be um, forthcoming for town meeting they'll be having um, um, a public hearing on that in a few weeks and they'll be hopefully finalizing their edits tomorrow so that it will be absolutely ready for folks to listen in and comment on um, I think that's probably about it for this week. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead with mine. Um, there was a Massachusetts Municipal Association alert that came through. I don't know if any of you saw that. But this is regarding Governor Baker's <coughs> initiative to add a supplemental budget uh, request for um, Chapter 90 monies, beef that up for roads, bridges, and infrastructure. And there's also money available for climate mitigation. Um, my idea was to, if we could, um, show solidarity for this supplemental budget request mm -hmm. and maybe send a letter off to our 
um, <clears throat> state rep and senator to let them know that we are on board because this is our tax monies coming back to the town of Hamilton to use as we see fit. So this is a great opportunity and I, I hope um, everybody understands the importance of getting revenues into our coffers any way we can, uh, you know, as far as um, getting tax monies to come back here to work for us. That's one of the best, um, <coughs> best ways to get money. <laughs> um, so I'm hoping we can do that. Uh, what was another thing? Joe, is the backflow valve on track? If you could. Yeah, we'll, Tim will be uh, will be bringing it forward to the board, select board um, in March or March seventh at the first meeting. Okay, uh, great. We got we got we just opened up bids last week. Okay. So, um, we'll put that together and bring it forward to you. Close and I also it. learned that the Hamilton Joe. Wenham Greens. Joe, you need to move your. Uh, there you go. Great. Uh, the Hamilton Wenham Greens Group is now known as the Hamilton Wenham Climate Action Team. Ooh, the Hamilton branded. Wenham Cats. Yeah. How about cats. that? <laughs> wow. um, I'm hoping that people who are listening, if you are listening at any time, they're looking for members and we really need to beef up membership. We want to um, create interest. We've got to create momentum so we can get these things done. Um, so uh, I don't have their email, but if you look up Hamilton Wenham Climate Action Team, you should be able to find that on Google. Um, if not, you might try Hamilton Wenham Greens and see if that will direct you to their new website or their emails or whatnot. So um, I'm really, really happy with that. And uh, I guess... I guess that's it, Joe. Did you have anything else that you wanted to um, add? Uh, one good piece, I mean, the town manager report was provided to you late this afternoon. Uh, it'll be provided to the public uh, on the website and through an e-newsletter uh, on Friday. Um, not a lot of updates this week. Uh, we do. We did finally get the uh, notice to proceed from the state on the swimming grant, so um, that our consultant was very happy about that because we've been trying. We've got to finish the work by June, and they were like, kind of <coughs> dragging their feet getting getting the contract approved. But we've got the notice that the contract was approved today, so that work should begin in earnest. And we've already our consultant on the um, accessibility and transition plan for town uh, town owned public facilities has already begun. They started the data collection and been reaching out to department heads. So. Um, those two initiatives are off and, and running. Good, that's great. Um, at this point, we're going to um, uh, go with the consent agenda, so I'll leave that in your hands, you two. Um, we have um, on the consent agenda, and then I'll make the motion, approve minutes of the Board of Selectmen meeting for December 20th, 2021, approve the minutes of the Board of Selectmen meeting from January 3rd, 2022, uh, and approve request for Melody Miles Road Race for May 28th, 2022. I move that we vote uh, in favor of all three of those. I'll ask to hold a January 3rd minutes. Uh, I apologize, have not had a chance to look them over. All right, I will re redo my motion then. Um, I move that we approve the minutes um, for December 20th, 2021 and May 28th, 2022 select board meetings. Oh, I'm, I'm making things up here, I apologize. Uh, and approve the request, I'm so used to approving minutes here, approve the request for Melody Miles Road Race for May 28th, 2022. Second. So, thank you. Okay, great, Rosie seconded. Okay, and all in favor? Aye. Aye. We're gonna move on now to our- Little League presentation. Yes. And so I will, do you wanna add, is there anybody from the Little League that wants to speak? About this and I can oh, there are two of yeah. us. Hi everybody. Lou, just remember identify yourself and, and then you can yeah. speak. Sure. This is Lou Levesque, um, Vice President of Hamilton Winham Little League, and Tim Fazio is also here. Welcome. Um, is okay, so there are two of you and is that correct? Yes. yes. Okay. Hi everybody. Uh, I'm, this is Tim Fazio. I'm the current president of the Hamilton Winham Little League. Um, Lou is the past president, current vice president. You guys probably know him uh, a little more than you know me. I think he was before you um, on uh, the scoreboard uh, at Patton uh, a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for taking the time. Um, you should have all received a copy of a presentation of the plan for scoreboards at Patton Park, um, but we can also go through that with you tonight as needed. 
Um, sure. The basic ask is just for your approval to erect two scoreboards, one at the Little League Park um, at Patton and one at the large diamond, the varsity, varsity baseball field where we also play Babe Ruth um, and uh, erect those two scoreboards, which um, are all um, already well on their way, if not 100% um, funded and um, planned out. We have um, worked uh, to um, consider uh, points raised by um, many folks here. Um, the last time when uh, uh, Lou presented uh, about a single scoreboard at um, the Patton Little League Park, um, including other points that the Recreation Board um, brought up about um, getting the two scoreboards to be matching. And uh, we've met with the rec board, which has also given their, well, they didn't vote on it, but they um, gave their um, enthusiastic support of the project. And at this point, um, Lou and I are here to um, ask for that approval, but answer any questions that you might have on any of the specifics or any of the plans that we have um, for the two scoreboards right now. Um, Scott, I have a, a quick question on um, powering. Are you going to be using solar-powered lighting uh, or so solar-powered electric source to run your um, scoreboard? So yeah, there are there are two different ones for these scoreboards. So the one at the Little League Park is actually going to be right up against the existing um, electric machinery. Um, right there for the lights. So there's no need to do any solar. It can just plug right in. Um, the one that we propose for the varsity baseball field is going to be solar and it's going to be located um, in left field. So farther away, like out of, out of the, the, the line of any sort of use of any of those fields uh, close to the horseshoe pits over there. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, just kind of question on the um, on the solar for the for the one that's kind of in <laughs> left field. Down left field, um, left field yeah. Um, and now the one that you're putting as a power thing, it makes sense to hook it right up to the power. And I I don't remember if I asked this question before or not. Um, is is the town assuming the electric bill for these, or is um, the paying the electric bill? Yes, I remember how it works. They the are. And uh, Sean Timmons, I think, is might even be on. But I think the understanding is that the um, for the, the one that's hooked up, the town would assume it um, along with the lights as they do, but it is a, a, a really negligible um, cost of, of power to power these things. Right, because they're not on all the time, they're just on during the games. No, correct. Yeah, Sean, we just, we just hook them up to, it's the same power source for the, uh, the, basketball, uh, <clears throat> the basketball lights and the tennis uh, court lights. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. That makes sense. And then do we have to go through any kind of zoning planning board stuff with this for size of the sign, Sean? So we're going to, so what we wanted to do, and I, I had talked to, uh, to the building inspector uh, or building commissioner, I should say. Um, so the first step was to get, um, to hopefully get the approval today to build on town uh, property. Mm -hmm. And then we would uh, submit a building permit. And then we're kind of at the behest of, um, you know, the building department on what the, the next steps would be. But uh, he thought it was a good idea as um, basically the applicant, which I guess technically the town uh, owes, um, owns the property to, to go through this phase first or this approval first. Right. And, and then as far as the scoreboards, the company that you're using, is there a, a warranty for a number of years? And then what's the kind of typical life of one of these outdoor scoreboards? I'm just kind of thinking of future maintenance costs and replacement mm -hmm. costs. Sure, and this is Lou, I'll interject there. Um, the, the warranty would expire uh, far, I think it's just a short ordinary manufacturer's one or three years depending, but it would, it would expire um, far sooner than I think the scope of your question, which right. I'll just come in to say that the Little League will assume perpetual responsibility for everything from constant maintenance other than the electrical to you know, one day even taking it down if, if ever so asked, but um, looking for uh, literally to assume that responsibility, which is for all intents and purposes, a lifetime warranty. <laughs> okay. 
Lou, I have a quick question. Um, what are the sizes of the sign, just for the public to understand? Um, sure, of, of course. And uh, I'm not sure if you're able to make our PowerPoint publicly available, um, but but it, it, it would be um, it would forever live in there, but I'll just give it to you real quick. And the answer is actually different for each scoreboard. Um, the the one out in left field for the big diamond, uh, that is a 13 foot tall, uh, nine foot uh, wide scoreboard. And if you ever wanted to see it, there's one at Cheeseman Field. Uh, it's the exact same model. However, if for those that were there in our previous uh, time before this board, um, we actually, have since formalized that the one in front of the, the the utility cage at the tennis courts we're actually going with a low profile scoreboard there so that we can remain um below or with in line with the current fence line mm -hmm. of the tennis courts so that the scoreboard wouldn't protrude above that yeah there's the slide there yeah. so the, the scoreboard won't protrude above you know the fence line um and also addressing prior uh concerns raised by this board uh this slide shows that we are building a um 11 basically an 11 by 6 um raised garden box into which we'll fill the soil and plant um you know locally resilient evergreen uh, that, that won't grow tall, but will sort of create a, a more aesthetically pleasing uh, base of this scoreboard. Thank you. And just, just one more question. This is more towards Sean, and <clears throat> I can't remember. Do we have, I remember when we were painting stuff on the dugouts, maybe my memory serving me incorrectly, but is there bylaws, rules with sponsorship and stuff like that? I see there's a space here for a sponsor's name or something on the scoreboard i can't remember what our rules were for sponsorship i know school committee has certain rules on the school property but i don't remember if the town does as well so we have it in the past and in fact um on the on the backstops at uh at Patton, um they they make room for sponsors or even on uh, you know on the fence you know specifically at cheeseman um, i know that's a winner but they use sponsors but i think one of the things to always keep in mind is it's the sponsor money that actually allows uh little league to do things like this little league's been incredibly generous the past four or five years whether it's been uh dugouts um, they uh, take care of so a lot of the field maintenance. They buy a lot of field maintenance supplies for us. So we know that, you know, we're, um, you know, uh, monetarily and financially speaking, uh, pretty tight in Hamilton and Wenham when it comes to, um, you know, these types of things and, and, and you know, um, with staffing as well. Um, so, you know, the sponsorship really goes a, a long way to help um, to help with those costs. But we have they have done done it in the past at, um, at Patton. Okay, yeah, I'm not against it. I just want to make sure that we're not <laughs> promising something we can't do that's against our rules. Any other questions? I have some comments to make. Um, first comment is when you folks came before us a couple of years ago, um, we had concerns about one scoreboard. And I'm actually uh, speechless that you've come back to us wanting not one, but two scoreboards, one of which will be the size of the one in Cheeseman Field, which is very substantial size. So that's my first comment. The second comment is, I believe that Patton Park is a public park. It's not a dedicated playing field. And I'm concerned that the more the Little League puts equipment in there, the less it becomes a place where people feel comfortable walking on. Um, I know that during the Little League season, that um, from I think it's April, in fact, through most of the summer and into the fall, a good portion of that public park is cordoned off so that people can't walk through it um, because it's reserved for, for Little League. Um, and so, um, I think by putting in these two substantially sized scoreboards, it will continue to change the nature of that park. Um, I, I'm, I'm hoping somebody can convince me of the necessity for this other than just that we want it because won't it be cool there? That Patton Park is for all of our citizens and it's slowly um, 
turning into just dedicated playing fields, and I wonder if the voters in this town have um, opted for that. So can somebody tell me um, it, why this would be necessary, or is it necessary? Sure. Kim, would you like to speak first? Because I'll definitely respond as well. Uh, yeah, Lou, you go ahead. That's fine. Yeah, sure. So uh, noted and loud and clear. Uh, I think that the totality of a year, 365 days, even though Little League makes quite an impression when it's there, um, the actual percentage of time in use versus not at use is far in favor of the, the, the ordinary park goer. Um, I think that specifically when Little League is playing there, you're talking about no less than 24 players and in very common cases, no less than another, say, 20 or 40 family members. So at any given time during an hour and a half Little League game, there are 60 to 80 people enthusiastically and passionately enjoying these fields. And in all cases, the remainder of the park is entirely still available to the common park goer. So I think it's actually still a very, you know, fairly shared um, disparity between the, the, the common park goers and Little League. Little League also, for what it's worth, almost solely funds um, the improvement and the constant upkeep to these fields. Naturally, the DPW has a role, but we really work hard to keep the entire area beautified. And I think for sure, without our efforts, the infield clay would be weed overgrown. We deal with that every year. Uh, the edging on the base paths would be far less defined. Uh, so I, I really think that we, we add to the park just as much as we may take it away for an hour and a half a night. Uh, these are also children you know, from four to 12 years old. So this is by no means an adult sort of exclusive endeavor this is this is community at work in little league as far as the locations of these uh the the presentation that we did fairly well demonstrates that the one on the big diamond uh, and i think if you could maybe bring that slide forward so we could all see it i think page uh nine um you know pretty well shows that the scoreboard in left field is out in what i would say is the most unused portion of Patton. It is tucked in under the trees in the back left corner. Um, so I that scoreboard is not going to disrupt the park in, in really any way, or at least nothing more than negligible. The one in front of the tennis courts, these scoreboards are actually not that massive. Nine by seven um, is the current size of the fencing over there. And I also included a picture here uh, up close showing the electrical box and frankly how much of an eyesore the existing electrical box is if you go to the next slide i think there's another image that shows before, Joe. um the the raw there it is so that there is by no means what i would consider a, a park attraction and we're gonna block that with a professional brand new scoreboard and complete with all of the landscaping accents that were requested by this board before so uh, I, I hope that those answers sort of uh work well with your question and, and that, that's my response tim did you want to reply no i think you said it all lou i think that the only um the only add is just that uh i think we do i don't know what the total numbers are this year but we regularly have um you know more than uh 400 um, children that we are working with, which is however many hundreds of families um, in both towns. Um, and, you know, we are, uh, these, these are unanimously approved by the Hamilton Wenham Little League Board, which constitutes, you know, the representatives of those families. So there is not an insignificant um, number of people in the town that um, don't think that these are you know, excellent ads and don't um, uh, impede on, you know, any other aspects of, of Patton Park. So, but I, I think uh, we ra raise a good question because we want to make sure that, you know, those types of things are answered and raised here. But I think Lou said, um, said it all. So thank you. I have one more comment and just in terms of the why. 
very commonly when these kids are out there playing, they're so young and, and frankly out there in the uniforms, cute as heck and really good at baseball. Um, you know, I find that your common park goers, strollers, dogs, whatnot, they, they commonly stop and watch these games. It's enjoyable. But without the scoreboard, there is a complete disconnect. They would never interrupt game play to ask what the scenario was. And I actually think that while the Little League family sort of know what's going on, the scoreboards are going to do well to tie in the other park goers with what's actually happening in the game at any, any given time. I can explain that in the slide, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad I didn't forget. But I actually do think that the scoreboard does well to make the baseball game itself more inclusive, even to those that don't know a player on the field. I've got one more question. It's un unrelated, but <clears throat> the scoreboard kind of in left field on the the high school field there. There's a road that kind of runs along the a kind of myopia schooling field side there. Mm -hmm. And is that scoreboard to the right of that road? Do you know what I'm talking about, Sean? I mean, there's kind of, a, it's not really, I don't want to call it a road, but for lack of a better term, there's some kind of a path there. And that's kind of that myopia border there. I just want to make sure we're not trying to put something on. My open yeah, property. to the, to the no, right, no. if you're looking at it from home plate, looking yeah. out. Yeah. Actually, yeah. If you're yeah, that would be, plate. it's really, yeah. it's really, you know, and we can, we can walk it too, but I think it's pretty, pretty closely tucked into to the foul line there. So, um, I mean, you don't want it too close to the foul line where it could become a, um, you know, a hazard, yeah. Uh, yeah. but it is, it's not on that. I know what road you're talking about. It's yeah. not, it's, it, it is over to the right a little bit. All right. Okay. So I will just, um, add a couple of more comments and maybe make another couple of questions. Um, first of all, this has nothing to do with children playing um, baseball. Um, I know there are a lot of kids that play baseball. Um, I love kids playing baseball. There's nothing more fun than watching kids play baseball. I have a son who played baseball his whole life. I have nephews who play baseball. Um, that's, that's not the issue. The issue is the fact that um, we balked about one scoreboard, and you've come back with two. It's a small park. Um, it's, it's cordoned off, and I'm not talking about the hour and a half that the kids play baseball every night. I'm talking about the fact that the fields are cordoned off. It's just a reality that um, the fields are protected for, for the Little League. And so let's not try to cloud the issue here. I, I think we need to remember that this is a public park. There are so many entities clamoring to use it. I really feel that this park is the gateway into our community, and there are more and more things crammed in there. And I feel that having two scoreboards is unnecessary. It's um, it's it's overkill and it's um, quite frankly not very attractive when one drives by. When one looks at the photographs of Hamilton what you see is a bucolic photograph of Weaver Pond and all the trees and over the last five years more and more um, um, equipment has been um, dropped into that park and I feel that this is just over the line in terms of how much clutter should be in that park. I, I kids know what the score is. That there's there's no I, I, I cannot justify the need for it. I can appreciate the want for it, but we need to consider just all of this clutter, it's not necessary. I know exactly the size of the scoreboard over at Cheeseman. I've spent many years over there watching Little League games. It is enormous, and I don't see the justification for it, and there's nothing against the kids. I love the kids. I love listening to them play, play baseball, but my, my concerns are the aesthetics, and I can't justify it. The, uh, the one that you mean is, is, is the 13 foot tall. This is the seven, the one that's over by the tennis courts. And I'm pretty sure, Sean, if I'm not mistaken, that the one uh, for the high school field had previously been 
uh, approved and, and maybe not formally, but I thought that it was. And I think it's important to note that that was a, a green scoreboard that was used from another property. And I believe that the placement of that was going to be over on the right field line near the bathrooms and in observance of the town's need. And frankly, mine, it's my part too, like keeping it decluttered or as much as possible we are buying the uh, brand new scoreboard so that we don't use one green and one one blue uh and we've now proposed that we go solar and in left field so that that one's out of the way so uh in full appreciation of, of your concern we actually sort of improved what i think was already approved by having these match um, and you know the, the the new placement. I just want to make that comment because we did do this in consideration of keeping the clutter down for sure. Two kind of <clears throat> follow ups. <clears throat> one is kind of the Sean Timmons, and then the other one's to you, Blue or Scott. Is um, the, the first one I'll ask to, to you two gentlemen from the Little League board is the scoreboard that goes in front of the kind of. Uh, I think it's really unsightly too. The the kind of electrical boxes there by the tennis courts. How deep? I mean, the typical scoreboard's, you know, a foot deep or so, but with that planting box and stuff, what's the kind of protrusion from that electrical kind of mess there out, you know, from the scoreboard? Like, how much more kind of footage are we talking, footprint under that scoreboard? Sure, I'll, I'll answer that. So the, 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 the box is um, 11 by, it only needs to be three deep. Um, I think it would, we would do well to make it slightly deeper um, to allow for the rooting of the evergreens, um, but no more than, than four feet. And we can place it as close to the fence as you would like. I would think that maybe just a small space to walk between, no more than a foot. So we're talking about a max of four to five feet off of the electrical box fence line um which is really not not it's not like it's dead center you know it's you already have to go around that so another four or five feet will work really hard to keep it tight and then the actual thickness of the scoreboard which i think was your question yeah. uh in our previous meeting is only about 12 to 14 inches yeah that's what i thought yeah. And then, Sean, the question for you is, as far as we're starting to work on a master plan for the park here, and I know scoreboards was part of it, is this fitting with what you're looking at for master planning for the signage and stuff in the park? Yeah, so one of the things that, you know, and I think Lou or Tim had hit upon it, um, you know, one of the things that we want to try to do is try to keep as much conformity as we can, and I think that was what, um, you know, went... Um, Kim Olson and I went in front of the CPC, um, you know, that was one of the things that we really stressed. Um, so, um, you know, again, we've kind of been through the process twice uh, for the scoreboards and um, it's been kind of disjointed. Um, so we wanted to make sure that, you know, when we were talking about scoreboards, or I wanted to make sure that when we were talking about scoreboards to the, to the board of selectmen, that we were kind of in unison uh, and we were, you know, kind of keeping them, you uh, the same design and the same look um, as to not cause, you know, like I think Lou had mentioned maybe a green and then a blue or so we want to make sure that they're consistent. So that was really, um, you know, part of the, um, you know, part of the reason that we, um, that the Little League decided to move forward with this. When did they decide to go with this, with the larger second um, unit? Yeah, so, so Darcy, so, so, Going back four or five years, uh, that, at that time, the, the high school boosters, it was in Little League, went in front of the planning board and they were uh, granted approval for a scoreboard uh, that was donated to them by Beverly, um, which would have been located um, right in front of the, uh, the bathrooms. Um, because of COVID and because of just everything that's happened, um, that never really got kind of kicked off uh, after that approval. Um, during that same time, the Little League came for their approval for their scoreboard. Uh, and again, COVID kind of put a halt to that. So we're trying to take two separate, you know, the Booster Club and Little League to try to combine it into one. So both scoreboards have actually been in front of town boards. We're just trying to make it, um, you know, conformed and, and, and in one ask from one group with what the rec committee thought was a, a better location for the larger scoreboard, which was that, that left field location, which I, I tend to agree with as well. Well. 
<laughs> what do we do at this point? <laughs> What, what was the time they were looking for? Yeah, what's your what's your kind of? Timeline. I mean, obviously you're looking for some kind of an endorsement for us tonight. What's your kind of timeline on if it's you know if it's approved tonight, then you go to the next board and and talk about size and scope and stuff like that. What's the kind of timeline here? Trying to get it in before, obviously the first pitch is thrown. Mm -hmm. No, that's yeah. impossible at this point. So. Um, as, as close to the beginning of the season as possible so that it can be enjoyed you know throughout the season but uh, if we ordered it tomorrow it would be a, an end of april delivery um so i think that if we are able to leave here with your blessing tonight we'll embark on the next step which you know theoretically would take a number of weeks and then hopefully order and get the scoreboard uh delivered and installed in may so that it can be a part of this season. But there is, you know, slight amounts of flexibility there. Right. Well, um, do you, does anybody want to make a motion? Um, I move that we approve the, uh, I don't know if we're approving it, we're endorsing it? Well, it's town property. Right, so we're approving the authorizing the use of construction and town land. Of uh, authorizing the uh, placement of scoreboard structures on uh, Patton Park property. Subject to any other board approvals they need? Uh, yes, um, contingent on uh, board approval from the boards that uh, need to further approve the process. Do I have a second? Well, there is no second, so I guess we're, we'll be tabling this discussion for um, when we have a full board. Yeah, and, and, and guys, I'd, I'd say to you, I would reach out to Selectman Kennedy and see if there's something you can do to maybe mitigate, make the park more welcoming, or think about footprint or other things that could be done to the park that may be in addition to the scoreboard that would benefit other folks. I mean, I I'm just kind of spitballing <laughs> here, but... I also have a suggestion that maybe just start with one, the one we have, the, the select board has, is familiar with, and maybe do that first, and then, um, you know, speak with Selectman Kennedy and see if you can come up with some other, um, an, an agreement or some kind of arrangement that would make her feel a little bit more at ease. Other than that, we will probably wait for the full board to come back but that's just a suggestion if you wanted to start small <laughs> I just want to again emphasize I absolutely love the kids this has nothing to do with that it has to do with the ability of the town to make um, an aesthetically pleasing presentation to people who come through our our town. Um, I, as I said, I've supported Little League forever and ever, um, and it's um, it's not a dilemma because I don't think it is for me. I don't think it's prevented the kids from having an absolute blast every single time they go out in that field I can be walking by and some little six-year-old will tell me exactly what the score is every time uh, so nothing against our, our wonderful little kids it's just the issue of how much can we cram into that park so that's that's my opinion I certainly would be open to talking about um, a smaller um, start um, so I don't know so thank you very much this is Tim Fazio again the president of the Little League and I'm very happy to meet with um, in person to have calls with it, anyone at any time uh, I'd welcome it um, because that's our first and foremost goal is to you know work to make the mm -hmm. the town facilities as best we can for everybody Wow. Um, and the okay. and the only the only thing that I would just add is I don't I don't know if this is something you want to do now but we are perfectly willing to go forward with the one um, scoreboard that we had presented to you now um, to lose point so that um, we could get moving on that and start talking with the building commissioner if that is something that you were prepared to look at and then we can come back and talk about the 
the second one um, another time. Would someone but that's to make to 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 totally up to you. Would he clarify which one he means by one? The, which the, one? The, 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 li the Little the League only, Park one, I believe. The smaller, the smaller, smaller one that we've the one by the yes. that we're power, familiar with. Power, right. Because I'm yeah. not familiar with the other one. I've never heard of two. And it's, it's Tim, right? Yes, Tim. I'm sorry. I think I called you Scott earlier. My my apologies. I, I, I've been called. I, I blame it on Darcy because I think she called you Scott because there's a Scott on the Zoom underneath you. But I, I apologize for calling you the wrong name. No worries. So if um, I would certainly be willing to negotiate if you can be satisfied with the one smaller um, scoreboard and not have this hanging chad about the other one, then you could certainly convince me to second a motion. Well, let's have a motion. Are, are you guys open to approving the the one by the tennis courts tonight, and then we can we can reconvene and talk about the other ones? Absolutely. absolutely. Well, yes, absolutely. But, but that's that's the negotiation. Um, I, uh, oh, you're saying you want to think on it more? No, I'm I would. Sorry, I'm I would. So. I would be willing to vote for the one smaller one. You want to make the motion? With okay, well, but but they're the ones who have to um, respond to the. Uh, negotiation. Um, I don't want, for all the reasons I've said, I'm against two scoreboards. I could live with one small one with the planter maintained by the um, by the Little League and I know how to find you if that becomes a messy area. Um, and if you agree to take the second one off the table, period. I don't see a need for it. Um, that I so if that if that's the case if that's the case then we won't take it off the table. Okay. We'll let's let's talk, and we'll wait till the entire board is um, is present to have another discussion, and we'll see right. if we can all come to um, an agreement. Because I wouldn't want to just sort of artificially take something out for the mm -hmm. purposes of shoving something through. I think Lou and I and the Little League board. Um, are very, very much in support of this entire project. And it's up to us to um, try to work with you all to make that happen. And we look forward to doing so. And, and I'd suggest maybe, you know, you don't have to, but maybe some kind of an, an invite to Selectman Kennedy and our select person, Kennedy, excuse me, and maybe a, a suggested site walk or something just so the entire board could go down and just see the footprint <coughs> by the tennis courts. I mean, it, it's fairly obvious, but it's always good to kind of be there and talk about it. And we could see where the one in left field is going and if it's really obtrusive or not, if it can be seen from the road is select person Kennedy is worried about and kind of encroaching on stuff. So, you know, that's just a thought too. maybe some type of, I mean, yeah. you've got a good modeling in the picture, but maybe you do something from different angles and elevations or something like that as well. That's that's great, and if I could, um, I'd probably impose on Sean. Sean's been a really great ally in all of what we do um, in Wenham and Hamilton. Um, maybe he can reach out to the appropriate um, person on the board to coordinate that, and I'd love to invite everybody down um, to do that walkthrough and talk through some things and see if there are things that, um, ideas that you guys have that we can help out with. I mean, we. We are, you know, baseball, softball, Babe Ruth centric. That's where, what our mandate is. Um, but, you know, we are, you know, caretakers of these parks as well. And we really do want to make them the best experience for everybody um, who's using them. So we're more than happy to do what's in our power um, to help out where we can. Okay, the other, the other issue is we do have a master plan for Patton Park that we're going to be spending a significant amount of, of money on and having some uh, landscape design. And so I'm, I'm wondering if this whole thing might not ultimately be premature. Um, so I, I don't have an answer right now, but I do think um, I, I appreciate your your zealousness for um, for the um, signs, and I hope you appreciate my zealousness for the town, the aesthetics, and the ability for all townspeople to use it and not feel like they're being um, inundated with signs. So there you go. 
Okay, I think we're going to move on. If, it, if, if you gentlemen have any questions or concerns or comments, um, last chance. <laughs> before oh, thank on. you for your time. I don't personally. I look forward to an opportunity where maybe we can visit the park together and hopefully that visit will, will do well to alleviate all the concerns. Thanks, that's Lou. That's great. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank yeah, you very much. That's good. Thanks, Tim. Thank Thanks, you. Sean. Thank you. Now we're going to move on to the department head report, fiscal year 23 budget update from our finance director, Alex McGee. Hello, Alex. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, here to provide a brief update on the finance department and specifically on the FY23 budget process and how things are uh, moving along. Um, Lately in finance, we've been working on mostly on budgeting, but also um, some state reporting. Uh, we unfortunately had a, um, a sort of a, a misfire, I guess, and we had hired a department assistant um, to help out up here at a 25 hour a week position. Uh, unfortunately, her previous employer reached out back to her um, and sort of uh, made her an offer she could not turn down. And so she, her employment here has ended, and so we're back um, searching for a new um, assistant. So uh, we're figuring out exactly the strategy on when to get that posted, but um, that's sort of the um, main issue we've had with staffing up here. Um, so otherwise, we're charging forward with um, our FY23 budget. We've had a pretty busy budgeting season, a lot of meetings with department heads, um, a lot of communication with the schools uh, and others, um, trying to fill in all of the gaps. Um, as you may know, early in the budget process, we are left with sort of placeholders as the numbers become more clear as we get them from sort of various different entities. For example, for our health insurance costs, our retirement costs for the year, et cetera. Um, and so as those numbers come into focus, our bottom line becomes more clear as well. So the as it stands right now, the bottom line has seen a reduction of two hundred and five thousand uh, dollars to bring us to a total of thirty six million six hundred and thirty one and nine hundred dollars. The majority of this reduction comes from the regional school district who um, has voted on their budget and Hamilton's share. So our apportionment is being reduced from the previous uh, request by about $185,000. So that's good movement in the right direction. Along with that, there's been a few departmental uh, increases, requests increases over um, the last sort of few weeks since we've had our sort of main budget presentation, which uh, was January 29th. So over the last few weeks, these changes have occurred. Um, the first is a request to increase the consulting uh, line item in finance. It's become clear as we don't have a third body or which is um, previously budgeted as a full-time employee and had been reduced to part-time. It's becoming clear that we need the extra assistance. And so rather than increase that to a full time, uh, like a 40, 40 hour employee, yeah. I believe it is more prudent to increase consulting so we can fill in the gaps that way. Uh, it'll be a lower overall expense to the town and will get us more targeted expertise where we need it. Um, there are some increases coming due to some unfunded mandates from uh, the Secretary of State's office. Um, specifically related to overtime for clerk, uh, for the um, assistant town clerk um, and other election staff, um, an increase in poll workers um, due to mandated early voting, et cetera. Um, and the, the clerk is requesting a salary adjustment as well. And that's something that uh, we don't have a final number on, but we'll, we'll work into sort of figure out what makes sense. Um, so more to come on that. I think that by the time the FinCom has their next meeting, which is March 1st, I believe, March 1st, there should be a salary request and we'll move that through the normal process where the FinCom will review and then it'll come to the select board. Um, $60,000 is being moved from the capital plan into operating. Um, and this is a, um, a unfunded mandate 
that has to do with NIPTES and drainage. Um, that'll go from capital into a DPW highways account. Um, and a stipend, uh, $3,000 stipend for our part-time health director who's taken over the duties of food inspections for restaurants. Um, this represents an overall cost savings to the town. Um, he's taking this uh, sort of portfolio of work and doing it at a sort of a lower bottom line so when we roll all of these changes up, it adds up to a $205,000 reduction over the previous ask. And our, um, our number comes in currently at $36,631,900. Um, that's a 3.74% increase over the FY22 budget. Um, you'll remember that the FY22 budget saw actually a decrease over the previous year. So this is, um, a slight course correction, but um, also it's still just modest in terms of the increases. So uh, that's all that I have tonight. Uh, happy to take any questions that I can answer. Hmm. Standing by. Um, just to thank you, Alex, for really putting in the time. I mean, obviously it's your job, but it's a bit extended because of the kind of changeover in staff and you're fairly new to us, but I, I do appreciate all the hard work you've done and, and kind of crunching the numbers. And um, I don't know if <laughs> I don't really have any questions unless anybody else does. Well, I, I um, want to ask about consulting. Uh, have you done a sure. cost benefit analysis on the consultants that you are considering? Uh, can you pinpoint where the savings would come from or what benefits we would uh, derive from those arrangements? Sure, I haven't done a specific cost benefit analysis, but I can tell you that, um, you know, the difference in 15 hours of staff time per week. So say we move somebody, uh, our, our, we currently have budgeted the, the assistant position, which is now unfilled again. Um, if we were to move that to full time, so say 40 hours a week, the difference would be 15 hours a week at, you know, 26, 25, $26 an hour, um, you know, times 52 weeks. So you're looking at a fairly significant cost there uh, versus a $5,000 increase in consulting, which will get us, you know, the rates that we would pay of $125 an hour maybe for consulting, but it would be, it would be done by, um, you know, a CPA and an expert in municipal finance. So mm -hmm. someone who could really help lighten the load on some very targeted um, work that we do. So most likely it would come near the year end close um, or some um, pretty specific financial reporting functions that we do out of here, which would allow us to stay on track for our, uh, the routine operations, um, paying bills, making sure payroll is done, making sure um, sort of the, the core functions of the municipal finance are being met. And so um, I can put together a more specific number to, to give you an idea of what the what I think the cost benefit would be, but I don't have anything specific prepared for that. Okay. Yes, I, I understand the concept. It's actually um, good because when you're targeting and you're just paying for that to get done, um, I can see where that would be um, a savings rather than having a, you know, a, a, a full-time member come on board again. So um, does anybody else have any questions? Mm -mm. Just that Alex has definitely yeah, I, done a stellar job. Yes, Thank yes. you, Alex. And I believe we have a joint meeting coming up. Um, Joe, when is that? March something. Tuesday, March 15th, 15th will, be the, uh, yeah. will be the joint meeting yeah, to so we'll make final you, votes on warrant. Sure. See you in about two weeks. Mm. Do you have any Great. questions for us? Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Um, looking forward to it. We'll keep up the hard work up here. Thanks, Alex. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Okay, now we're going to move on. Um, we're going to review the extended producer responsibility resolution. Um, did everybody get the latest uh, iteration on that? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> so I think I must have <coughs> left it at it, In the home. packet, Joe, if you're looking in the yeah, packet. For tonight, it's, page, it. it's page 18. I might have oh, page 18. So good. Mm. And if we could put that up when you find it, Joe, that'd be great. I'm and that way the public right can look at yep. it too. Yeah. So we talked with, um, there it is, yeah, talked with um, Angelo, and she, she um, 
we, we talked about some edits, and I think this um, document is just super. It mm -hmm. talks about the facts, talks about um, the fact that 45% um, of packaging are, are mm -hmm. discards, um, that this is encouraging our legislature to vote for extended producer responsibility, meaning that they will take responsibility for um, recycling, disposal of particular products, including uh, mattresses, paint, paper and packaging, and electronics. Um, it will certainly cut cost um, tremendously to, to the towns, and it would also encourage um, producers to be thoughtful about their packaging. I think we've all seen um, how it's how you have to unravel. I mean, sometimes five layers of packaging, and it all goes in the trash. It's it's un, unnecessary, and um, producers certainly can use their. Um, uh, development teams to produce packaging that doesn't place such a burden on consumers and ultimately on the towns that have to collect their trash. Mm -hmm. And so with this um, resolution, should the select board agree to vote in the positive for this, it will go to the state who will be voting on this resolution. It was originally on um, February 2nd deadline, now it's the end of March. So I um, encourage the board to vote favorably for this. Right, so this is still timely then, which is good. Mm -hmm. Does anybody want to make a motion and then we can open it up after a second? Mm -hmm. Do you want to make a motion, Rosie? I'll second Sure. It. I make a motion that we approve the extended producer responsibility resolution. No, I second it. Okay, great. Um, yeah, I'm <clears throat> bullish on this. I think this is going to be um, a great way to have companies innovate so they can conserve their resources. That's what it's going to come down to. They're, they don't care about other people's resources, <laughs> but this will force them to, it will, they will have to reckon with the costs. And I think it's a win, win, win all the way around. So I am bullish on this. And uh, I am hoping we will vote tonight in the, in, in the affirmative. And Sean, did you have anything you wanted I, to add? You just had my wheels turning there, Darcy. I'm, I'm all in favor of it. I'm going to vote in positive tonight. But when you mentioned it's kind of, it's back on the companies, right, for the packaging. Yes. It makes them to kind of be more innovative. But yeah. I, and when you said that, I would almost think it's going to cost them, I mean, I'm not a producer of factories and product, <laughs> but I would think that at some point it's got to be cost savings because they're That's doing right. less stuff for packaging. Yeah, there will be competition on who can do right. the best, That's the best time. work, which is right. what we're looking for. We want to incentivize mm -hmm. good behavior. Right, because right, it's exactly. a lot to make all those machines and tooling products to do all yes, that packaging. And the plastics. Even though plastic is cheap, I would assume for them to make. But well, maybe in the short run, but short not run. for our environment. Right, right. it's exactly. cheap for them, but it's very expensive for municipalities. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, throwing it right back on their shoulders. So if anybody would like to entertain a motion, we can move on. We, we did. The motion on the we got the motion in second. And we have it seconded. Oh, and we have a second. Okay, unless then let's go for a vote. Unless you wanted to ask if nope, there's nope. anybody online. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Nope. I think okay. we're, are we ready? Yeah, call the vote All first. in favor, vote now. Aye. 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 Great. Opposed. Hmm? Opposed. <laughs> oh, yes. Are there any opposed? No. Motion passes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so it looks like we're going to review some warrant articles, and we're going to vote to close the warrant for the spring ATM. I see we have Tom McEnany here, our, our town council. Hello, Tom. I Who's think you're on, on mute. mute. <laughs> oh, still on mute. Don't have you yet, Tom. Keep trying. Maybe Joe's got you muted. No, I, I think it's the speakers. Maybe it's Tommy the speakers there? that are off. Oh, he's got my disease of my <laughs> computer. Mutosis. I, I, Mut I like that one, mutosis. I do too. <laughs> I saw a button that you can buy that goes on your computer. It's like a red light on and off. Like You can tell whether you're on or not. Watch it. It's genius for people. <laughs> yes. No, not Still yet, Tom. Not yeah, Jay Butler. Do we do we want to move on to some other articles, or do we need this, Tom? To this talk is the first? last one. This is all. Well, you you need to have a motion to table the other thing because it's on the agenda. So you should at least take it up and, okay. and have it yep. tabled since that was the request. 
While we wait for Tom to get his speakers, um, there was a uh, indigenous proclamation that we were going to discuss and vote, but because we don't have all five members, and um, Bill, our chair, has requested that we hold off on that. Right. So we're tabling that for this evening. All right. In the meantime, how, how's, how's he doing? Is he logging back on? Yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna log back in. Yeah, that's yeah. what I would do too. That's what he just said. He's gonna yeah. log. Doesn't show him. All right. So, and just kind of while we're waiting on Tom, if you joined us for the Indigenous <coughs> Proclamation, it's been tabled until I'm going to assume our next meeting. Yes. So. Yep. Let's see if Tom, I have better luck this time. Hmm. No. <sighs> no. Nope. Nope. Sorry, Tom. Not yet. Maybe if you turn off your camera, we can just go with your voice. Will that work? Okay. Or you can phone in. Or you, yeah, well, yeah you, could, you could call in on a separate phone, Tom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw the name Scott Regan under, under the Tim's. other fellow's name, and I just, it just went with it. I think we both did it. Um. There should be names on everyone. Hey, um, I don't think we could do it this way because we're going to get feedback. If you can call in to the Zoom or from your cell phone, you that can have, you, and that in would theory. work better. Otherwise, if I do put this up the speaker, we're going to have. You've had to do that before, do right, Darcy, with, with the call in? Or yeah, maybe it was it, yeah. That's me, yeah. Is it? Oh, God, what a nightmare. Well, why don't you put him on speaker? Can you put him on speakerphone? You can, you're hearing me over the, you're hearing me over the microphone in the room, which is the reason that I'm not. I'm not able to use your phone on my phone. Yeah, it's, it, it's not saying in here either, it's saying that you're not muted, but yeah. now I just now I just muted. You want to try to unmute that and see if that works? Okay. Okay. All right, if you can, if you can yeah. use your phone to dial into the um, Zoom separately, the then, you, then your phone will be yeah. in one, one place and you'll be in the other. Okay? Because Thanks. You need to have an Just all the time. Uh, it's so frustrating. It's always worked before. <laughs> yeah. It's so weird. It always works until it doesn't. Yep. Five minute recess. I was going to say, while we, if, yeah, if we want, I can share the uh, screen with the articles that yes, are up, please. and you can talk to Jay about the CPC yeah, articles. How's that sound? You okay with that, Jay? Yes. Perfect. Thank you. We can hear him loud and clear. Beautiful. Okay, now let's see. Here comes, so here comes Tom's number now. Okay. So, all right. So yeah. I think. Wait, well, wait a minute now. Um, where are we, Joe? I'm sorry, I was going to ask you to enlarge that, so, Joe. I didn't mean to interrupt you, Darcy. Yeah, I'm, uh, I, can, um, I can enlarge the view here so people watching at home can read this. Did Tom make it on? Tom, are you it? on? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I am. Okay, Tom's we here. Go with All Tom. right, great. Sorry, Jay. <laughs> yeah, I'm Brandon Shop because it shows me on my screen, it showed me as unmuted. Mm. I've been on several Zooms today without issues, so I don't, I don't really know what the problem is. So what is he saying? It's us? <laughs> It's not me, it's you. Breaking up with no, us, Tom. Not at all, I just have no <laughs> idea what it is. <laughs> okay. okay, so I think we're ready to go over the warrant articles and um... Okay. So right now, uh, most of the most of the warrant is kind of typical business <coughs> items, election of officers, reports, motion for consent agenda, compensation classification table, <coughs> annual financial articles, bills of a prior year, et cetera, et cetera. We cut down to uh, Tom Budget, the Water Enterprise Fund. Uh, and the Hamilton Development Corp fund all regular articles the, the right. that are on the warrant every year. Community Preservation Fund, we have Jay to talk about this. As of right now, I know that we have a Patton Park Master Plan, a Community House Square, the annual CPC funding article, um, 
then we have a couple, we have some questions here for Jay. Uh, one, we originally had a placeholder here for correct prior year appropriation due to lack of the town hall project, but I think now where the board is talking about potentially having a uh, ballot question in the fall, Jay may have a different idea that, that that item might need to be something else. And then he also uh, had asked for us to have a, 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 an article to appropriate additional funds from previous year to various reserve categories because of some clerical error that something didn't get done the right way last time. Okay. okay. Jay, do you want to explain where we stand there? Sure. Well, yeah, the the Patent Park Master Plan is obviously a, a grant request from the DPW slash rec department and the Community House Square is a request from the Community House and those are two separate grant requests. The annual CPC funding article, that's where we have to vote to put 10% into each of three eligible categories and then 5% into our administrative budget. That's a housekeeping uh, consent agenda type item. And then we, we had two, we had two um, issues that came up in the last couple of years. Back in 2020, um, we inadvertently underestimated the 2% surcharge review. So when we voted at town meeting to put in the 10% to each of the three eligible categories and even the 5% for that matter, we under inadvertently underfunded it. So this is a makeup and I don't know the, the uh, I don't know the, the dollar amount we're talking about. I would hopefully Diane Katz would help me with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's kind of a makeup. And then uh, in last year's ATM, we didn't make a 10% uh, uh, allocation to the historic preservation budget because we thought uh, that we were success oriented and thought we were going to pass the town hall project and we didn't. So again, it's a makeup call to put 10% into the uh, historic preservation budget for last year. Gotcha. And Jay, that's going to come out of our, um, oh, I can't remember the name of it right now, kind of our, our bulk fund uh, instead of the individual buckets. Would that come out of our? Um, stabilization or capital? No, the general. Unreserved. Unreserved, that's what I was looking for. Our CPC it, unreserved it, funds. I see. So both of these corrections would be a internal transfer of funds right. from our unreserved account into the appropriate categories right. to, to, to uh, make up for these two inadvertent clerical errors the past couple of years. So both of them are clearly consent agenda type right. activities. Right. Uh, it yeah. doesn't add or subtract anything. It just, it just moves the buckets. Right. You're just moving internal stuff, and it's and it's coming from our unreserved fund. That it's not degrading any of our <laughs> other historic no. or recreation no. open space type of buckets. Uh, so we also need a. Um, a warrant article to pay the uh, the bond repayment for the year for Sagamore Hill. Mm -hmm. mm. Right, our bond our bond obligations, right? A bond obligation for Sagamore Hill. Yes. So you need so you need a total of six articles, is what you're saying? Well, I might need one more. <laughs> um, the I'm not sure what, what we're going to do with the town hall renovation project and when it might be approved or whatever, but if, if and when it gets approved between now and next spring, if you will, do we need a separate uh, article to fund the bond repayment? Because we don't have any money set aside for construction. And so even if it passes uh, the, the, uh, at town meeting and again at, at a special election, do we have to have a separate vote on the bond repayment to, to pay the first year bond repayment for that project? I, I don't know the answer. I could very well be dreaming about that, but I'm just wondering, do we need such an article? Right, and I think we had another question, Jay, that would be more directed that Tom, town council was about our kind of our, we keep calling it sunset, but it's really a start date for yes. grants and construction and yeah. and I believe it's in our warrant article language. I think it would have to be another town vote and we're hoping to kind of thread the needle here with it depending on how things go. But 
and maybe Tom can answer so, that if if we can if we can sure. extend that as a CPC board, it would have to go back to town meeting to extend that that start date deadline. That for, that's, well, I, for for the town hall project. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I think with respect to the town hall project, um, I'd have to take a look at the vote. I know there were there were two separate votes that were taken. One was to appropriate funds from the CPC, and another was just general kind of town funds. Um, I believe, or at least I thought, were both of them subject to a debt exclusion? Yes. Or was it only the town portion and not the CPC portion? Only the town portion. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I'd have to take a look at that and see whether or not we would have to revote that. Um, I don't recall the specific language that was used in that more article. Well, I, I the we, the article that we voted for the CPC grant, there were two. There was a mm -hmm. one, there was a three million dollar grant, and then the next uh, town meeting there was a one million dollar grant. They were sort of clustered. And they weren't the continued. They were they were both contingent on passage of the town's portion at a town meeting, and subsequent passage at a special meeting and construction start by November fifteenth, twenty twenty two. And it's that depending on whether we're going to bring the when we're going to bring the uh, town the town portion back up again, we might run up against that November twenty twenty two start date requirement that was written as part of the warrant article so that might have to be extended out in time if that need be but i'm guessing right. depending on yep. when we bring it up we, we need to have to be revoted yeah. right yes there, there's no ability to extend a deadline that was included in a town meeting vote <laughs> um we would have to if the if the condition hadn't been satisfied by the particular deadline that was set in the town meeting vote then we would need to include a new warrant article to revote that because it, it would have lapsed at this point yes mm. so we're kind but of the, in a mm. tight spot yep with that well mm. the the uh, just just a thought on that and i this happened once before and i know i didn't like it neither did sean but um if, if indeed the uh, this um, town hall vote would be brought up for the fall town meeting um and it were to pass at town meeting and then heaven help us pass at the special election um <laughs> there wouldn't be much time between the special election approval and that november 15th date but my my thought was once before when when, when the CPC voted money to, for the roof at the Patton Homestead, uh, it was proposed that st opening up a um, building uh, permit uh, a building permit satisfied the start date requirement, and at the time, town council approved that. Hmm. <laughs> yes, I, I think that would be fine. I think there would have to be some steps taken towards the actual construction, whether that's, um, and, and I, I don't think that necessarily means that you have to have shovels in the ground. I think it, as long as there are steps that have been taken in terms of taking out a building permit, for example, or, you know, signing a contract with a contractor, um, something like that, that, that some affirmative action taken by the town towards construction, I think would be satisfactory. I don't think you actually have to have a construction crew necessarily on site. So you would, you would accept opening up a, a building permit as, as meeting the requirement? Well, if it's legal, yes. <laughs> yeah, I think it does. At that point, um, you know, the contractor would have been engaged the contractor would have taken out a building permit. Presumably, he would have ordered um, building supplies and wood and bricks and you know wow. whatever else he needs to do the construction. And so, I think that that, in my opinion, would be good enough to satisfy that requirement. Well, it, um, what I learned, we there was a mini meeting before the, one of the last uh, select board meetings where it was decided that the we might go in with a not to exceed number yep. for the town's portion and if if it were to be approved then to go out for public bid and so 
if that were to happen, you wouldn't have a contract to even on board. Um, <laughs> you'd be, you might have an approval to, to go ahead with a not to exceed number, but you wouldn't have a, a contract to sign up. So the question would be, it would be the DPW who would take out the building permit, I guess, if, if that were allowed. Well, we still have, we're still working with the same um, developer. Well, the same, the same not, architect. Not we're the same contract. If you've got to go back out to public bid, right? But it's got to go back out to public right. bid, like right. you said. It does, yeah. And but and then that comes down to the you, cost of a yeah. public bid again, which is why the thought of not, finding uh, monetary approval first before we spend right, another hundred thousand dollars, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. So it's a well, sort of a catch well, twenty-two. We could investigate whether the OPM could take. Uh, yeah. Could pull out the pull the building yeah. permits. Yeah. Hey, uh, Tom. I know you're still there, obviously, but could you could you opine on this a little bit for for Joe and the select board and the CPC to kind of see if you know, like as Joe just mentioned, the OPM yep. maybe filing something or what we could kind of what kind of wiggle room we have with with that. I think it's uh, we could certainly take a look in, into it. I think the first person I would ask would be the building inspector what he's the one that's going to issue the right. building permit so i think the best probably source of information would come from him in terms of what does he need in order to issue a building permit right um and who can take it out i mean i know for at least on residential the owner of the property can certainly take out a building permit as can a contractor who the owner engages to do the construction work I believe that an architect probably could as well, although I'm not 100% sure on that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that the building inspector would probably be the best person to advise on that because he would know, he's gonna be the one that's issuing the permit, so he can tell you specifically what he would require in order to do so. All right, that's a good point, Tom. Hmm. <clears throat> but the other thing that could be done is if the vote were gonna be uh, on the town's portion for the town hall would be taken next fall we could easily vote for the extension of that november 15th date uh move it out several months the cpc is in favor of doing that if necessary Okay, right, we so could we always seem to have people that are some... working on all con the contingencies we're running into so right. maybe the pieces will come together hopefully <clears throat> Hey, mm -hmm. Tom, if demolition helps is starting the project, I'm, I, I volunteer to start interior demolition. <laughs> <laughs> but don't ruin any of the wainscoting. Right. <laughs> and moving the, um, the uh, second floor over to Gordon Pil Pilgrim Hall, is that also part of We're, this? Uh, I'm waiting to hear back from, uh, from uh, Gordon Conwell now about w whether they'll, we offered them a, a proposed lease agreement that would be very favorable to the town. <laughs> they didn't balk at it in, in discussion, so uh, we're waiting for their board to vote and have them okay. notify me. So, okay, I'll check so back lots of things. potential things. Yes, lots That's of potential. <clears throat> that money, that money to move uh, people from town hall to Pilgrim has already been approved. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Right. yep. Yep. We already have that available. Yep. We need it. So, so just to confirm, Jay, I'm going to keep six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven articles. Um, aside for you, and maybe in the next week we can confirm with you and Alex and Diane what exactly you need, particularly for the uh, you know the, the prior year appropriations, uh, the potential bond payment for Sagamore Hill, if a bond payment may be needed in, in FY 23 for Town Hall. Um, yep. And we'll we'll get that stuff off to Tom so that those those articles can be drawn up and ready for the uh, March 7th <coughs> select board meeting. Mm. Sounds okay. Good. Okay. So we've got a lot of work to do there. So that's the that's the CPC. big stuff on the CPC. Yeah. The next yeah. articles um, we have um, Patent Homestead Enterprise Fund budget. The article to amend the school committee election language in the district agreement. You did get late ads to your yeah. packets today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, a draft warrant article. Tom, I'll share that with you as well if I didn't already. I think I copied you in that email. I, I, I think I have that one. Um, so. Uh, I know that the board had some questions about um, whether the agreement could be opened in that um, very um, narrow way. And so Tom had agreed to join us tonight partly to discuss that with you. But and the short of it is he says it can be. Okay. Um, yes. Yep. The, um, yeah, the regional school district agreement spells out the process to amend the agreement. Um, and it basically is 
there's a petition process where where individuals could petition the regional school committee for certain changes to the agreement if they wanted to do so um, and then but uh, mostly it looks like the way it typically is amended is by vote of the regional school district committee um, they essentially come up with what the amendments are that they want to propose and they vote on it and then they send those to the town clerks for both towns and those then get included on the mm. uh, annual or in, in either an annual or special town meeting warrant for approval by the voter by the uh, town meeting members. So, um, so the warrant article and then what it would make the ad uh, agreement look like were provided to you uh, today by the school committee. Mm -hmm. um, there's also an. Uh, uh, we're, we're holding it as a placeholder right now. The Conserv Hamilton Conservation Commission is looking to amend the Hamilton Conservation Wetlands, uh, Wetlands Protection and Conservation Con Bylaw. Con I think the more um, the term um, that I think is most advantageous is the Conservation Bylaw, and it's actually not an amendment. It's pretty much a new bylaw because our town council opined that our bylaw is. Um, non-defensible <laughs> it's it's just um so approve a new hamilton conservation bylaw mm -hmm. I, I i believe that was the wording that we used at the meeting last week and um so the conservation commission met last week and they're meeting again tomorrow mm -hmm. night right. and then they are scheduling a public hearing for march 9th mm -hmm. which is two days after the board uh, approves warrant language so you'll have the warrant language at the May, March 7th meeting to approve to go into the warrant, mm -hmm. but the public hearing won't have be, been held until two days later. Mm. And then you get together in a joint meeting with the FinCom on the 15th to um, make to vote recommendations for the warrant and uh, FinCom book of recommendations. I don't think that's enough time for this. It well, that's, that's why there's a placeholder. Mm. That's why we call them placeholders because right. You know, you do the best you can, and sometimes you're going to make that printing uh, deadline, and sometimes you're not. Right, but exactly. at least the work will they're, continue. They're moving full speed ahead. They're they're feeling. I I just worry um, that it's rushed. If it's such a big change, you well, know, and, and you two are always ones that don't want to rush things. So I just yeah. I don't know. I feel that well, it's rushed. Well, this has been hanging on for a while. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> Rosie's been, put a lot of work. It's been it's been batted around for a couple of years now, and the conservation commission. Um, is is aware of what's in it and they were their major concern was that we didn't need a new bylaw because everything was in the regulations but as town council pointed out um, having issue having uh, issues in the regulations is not defensible legally yeah. these issues these um, uh, clauses must be in the bylaw itself so it's it's reconfiguring um, the fundamentals of the bylaw. And so um, the folks who are on the Conservation Commission were very optimistic. They have taken the lead on this. They're very, very concerned that we don't have um, a conservation bylaw right now. And so that's, that's the, the reasoning behind that. And we're in, we're it's like an insurance policy. It's there if we need it, and if they can't make the deadline, they go to the next exactly. Um, opportunity. Exactly. But at least it gives we, we're giving them a, a chance to, to right. get their right uh, thing together. And do you know, I, I think the bottom line is sometimes when you're when you're um, forced to look at something, it really makes you look at it very closely. So. That's their thought. We'll see what they come up yeah. with. So it, I hate to feign ignorance, but it, is there like a red line version of our current bylaw versus yeah. what they're proposing, yeah. or how, where are they in the process? I'm just worried that they're if they're not that far in the process, this is kind of last minute to me. But. No, they're they're way in the process. They're they're finalizing their. So when will we see the um, proposed? Well, they're they're, they're 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 going to write. <laughs> T tomorrow, uh, I, I was tomorrow told, night. yeah, that they're going to. F uh, they have um, essentially nothing on their agenda. Mm -hmm. They have um, purposely not put anything that was unnecessary on the agenda. They plan to work on this um, for um, a large majority of their meeting. They've been working 
on it at home and they have been sending in comments and um, last I heard from them they're they're very optimistic so um, I, I agree it, it's it can seem a, a little scary but it's not anything that they're not very familiar with mm -hmm. and you know uh, so that's that's all I'll say about that okay um, and then the last one will be another um, placeholder uh, for article to uh, consider climate change resolution yeah the Hamilton Wenham cats the climate action team um, they are they have um, put together um, a, a final draft I think they're calling it uh, version 4-4 and uh, let's see do we have um, is it Scott Regan who's here is that um, let's see where's Bob, Robert, Robert Bob Knowles, Knowles. Is oh good and, and Bob Knowles okay uh, Bob would you like to um, say hey Darcy, something this is what you sent over this afternoon <laughs> to me Yes, I did. Uh, yeah. can, you, can you hear me? We can. Yes. Thank you. Okay, great. Thanks for having me. And thanks for considering the resolution. Yeah, we've been working on this for uh, a couple of months now. And um, uh, I think um, we've gotten some really good comments back from, uh, from three of the select boards so far. And we're hoping to get a few more if possible. And uh, we really appreciate your, your um, you know, putting it in as a placeholder for, as a warrant article. So we've got a great team of five of us, um, also with the help of Vicki, yes. the energy manager for the town, and um, we're working hard to get it done. Darcy, could you resend that email? Oh, sure. It, does, it didn't have the attachment to it. Oh, sorry, you know me. <laughs> Um, Bob, is there any, do you have any questions on the process or um, any concerns or, or anything like that that you want to, any questions for us? Um, I, I don't think so. Um, the deadline is March 7th. Is, is that correct? That's sort of our drop dead deadline to. Yeah, yeah. Um, if I could say, yeah, technically, yeah, the board will be meeting on March 7th. Uh, we'd like to try to provide the board with materials for the meeting a couple days in advance. Usually I send the packets out by Friday before a meeting at the latest. So um, you're really probably looking at March 4th um, in order for the board to be able to receive the resolution and read through it. I think that's um, fair. If, but it seems like you're pretty close, so. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully you can okay. get that. Yeah, I don't think that's too much heavy lifting, really, because I, I haven't <laughs> seen this latest version of it, but... I didn't have that many edits to it, really. Mm. So, and most yeah, there, most there, kind and of I did update um, Sean's comments and um, cleaned up a bit of what Gretel Clark had to say about composting. Um, it's pretty straightforward. There's a lot in there. We're hoping to build our team. We're hoping to, to you know, if we can get this ideally as a Warren article that gets passed on April 4th and we're all off to the races. It's incredibly urgent climate change, as you all know. Um, you know, so I, I, I really hope that we can get this uh, done and passed and we're going to work hard to do it. I can't all right. I have hot spot anymore. Oh, okay. And I don't. Yeah, probably. Um, <clears throat> could I ask Robert, what, what would the uh, what would the effect of the passage of the resolution by town meeting be in, in the climate action team's uh, opinion, <clears throat> I guess? Um, so I, I started this process um, back in late August, early September, by a phone call to Vicki, uh, the energy manager part-time for, for Hamilton Wenham. And at that time, uh, we talked about what all the great work that Greg Horner and, and Sue Petrolia had done as far as Hamilton and Wenham both becoming green, you know, so-called green communities, um, of which, in fact, we've met four out of the five criteria. We have not met the fifth criteria um, to be a green community, which is um, a 20% reduction over five consecutive, consecutive years um, of energy, you know, on the energy efficiency side. So um, Scott Regan, who is on with me now too, is, is helping, his company is doing pro bono work um, in that regard. Uh, we hope we can help to get Hamilton and Wenham to the, you know, to 
um, qualify for the fifth uh, point as a green community. But, um, you know, so when I started all this process months and months ago, it was really under the, the mantra of Governor Baker and the rest of the Commonwealth saying zero carbon by 2040. So that, that's the bottom line in all this, zero carbon by 2040. Whatever we need to do, however we need to do it, we know it's gonna cost money, but we need to get there. And so, you know, the resolution has um, five-year increments moving toward that goal uh, that we hope we can all achieve by 2040. And in the resolution, there's, there's five points in there um, that are critical to making it happen. So I hope everyone will seriously consider this. And uh, if there's any questions for me, I, I'm happy to answer them. Scott is on too, he's happy to answer them. So, um, you know, I hope we can get it done. Well, that sounds encouraging. And Sean, I did mail you the, um, I don't know if you oh. just- if Yeah, I just saw, I got a little I, red dot yeah. on my mail here, so. Um, okay, so. Thank you, Darcy. Let's see. Um, I guess there's really not much more to add at this point. Um, motion to close the warrant? Yes, please. I move that we close the warrant, and thanks to Scott and Robert for doing the touch-ups on this document. Mm. And I second. Uh, Great. Uh, and vote? And all aye? <laughs> all in favor, yes. All in favor? <laughs> aye. 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 All, uh, anyone uh, nays? Any nays? No? Okay. Motion passes. Okay, I think we're all set. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Look forward to getting it done. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Scott. Is there any uh, okay. other order of business that anybody Thank wants to bring up or no? About or okay. Tom, Tom, are you asking a question? No. Yeah, I just wanted to see if you're all set. And um, so, do you need a draft warrant for the meeting on the seventh or the fifteenth? I think we need the draft warrant as much as possible by the seventh. Yeah. Um, we'll. As but much so, as we can okay, get. So that, we can, so that we can make any tweaks before the fifteenth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, um, okay. Can can I just make a comment on this um, climate resolution? This is um, this is a goal. This is you know I just had a resident um, freaking out text texted me and thought that this was perhaps going to be a requirement. It's a, it's a goal and certainly. Those who can reach it, certainly we want to um, encourage them um, in any way possible. There may be state grants, state assistance coming down the line, but... Also, let me interject <clears throat> here. Um, the person who's worried should not worry because this doesn't talk about individuals. This is just municipal, right. mm. just for our municipality. Right. It, and um, it doesn't include any private um, households or... Yeah. Uh, anything like that. Right, so. If it rubs off, great. But yeah, that's what we're hoping. Right. But yeah. I think the, the other thing is, too, when we adopt different kind of proclamations or yep. goals like this, it, it helps us when we do apply for grants from the state right. that they right. see that we've made this pledge or promise to right. move forward on this stuff, that they know that we've mm -hmm. got some kind of tooth and, to it. Yeah. And the money that's coming down the pike for this is only for regional efforts. <laughs> so we're reaching out to other towns like Rockport um, and seeing if we can... Uh, you know, Wenham's, I believe, going to make an effort to, to <laughs> get on board, but we're going to have to have a regional. It's a force multiplier, and that's how we're going to be getting our grant money. So it's really important that we reach out to other towns and uh, make connections with people as best we can <laughs> and uh, get, that, get the grant money flowing. Yeah, I think Joe's doing a really good job with that at regionalizing yes, things, yeah. so that so that people uh, are getting uh, very very used to that concept. And so good, good. This good is job. kind of if I can bring Robert and Scott back into it, if you guys don't mind for a second. I have a question to you too, since you're kind of spearheading some of this with us. Sure. Have have you both or any you looked into kind of other towns doing a similar proclamation? Have you had? Oh yeah much kind of go back and forth between other municipalities with this? I see Darcy that's and I great, <clears throat> Yeah, that's a great question. It's, it's Bob Knowles here. Um, yes, in fact, that's why we put a, a separate um, section in there to, to reference other towns right. that are referenced in the resolution that are, that are much farther along than we are. The two cities that are doing an incredible job and even more so 
than we write in our three or four pages of our resolution or Marblehead, uh, excuse me, Beverly. Beverly and Salem. If you see what they've launched in the last two to three years, you'd be amazed. It's a complete 360 degree um, climate change. <clears throat> you know, I'll call it, I don't know if it's a bylaw at this point, but it's a. It's more than a resolution. And it's an initiative. Yes, they're more at risk because they're coastal communities, so they really have to take all this very, very seriously as being coastal communities. So we're inland, we're not quite at as risk as they are, but um, if anyone were to go look at those two PDFs that they've designed, it, it covers every single thing you can think about as far as sustainability goes from recycling, composting, water resources, um, zero, you know, um, zero carbon, clean energy. It goes on and on and on. It's impressive what they're doing over in Salem and Beverly. So if we can do even a piece of what they're doing, we are doing a very, very good job. So, um, but many, many towns and more and more around us are, are doing what we're trying to do here. So we're not alone. We need to collaborate. We need to um, share best practices. We need to all work together because we need to set some of these goals and, and start reaching them, at least on, a, as you say, on a municipal level. I think private homeowners is a whole nother situation, but I, but I agree. I think if we can get after the municipal piece, municipal piece of all this, then the rest hopefully will fall into place on the residential side. Yeah. So. Bob, have you, have you reached out to the MMA, Mass Municipal Association, yet? I believe through Vicki we have, um, yes, I believe so. There's a couple of different resources that we're in touch with, and I believe that they're one of them, yep. Yeah, they'd, they'd be a good proponent or kind of advocate. They, you know, they'd be a good one to kind of reach out to and see if there's an initiative that could be a little bit wider with the state. Yeah, one other thing um, we have an advantage is that Vicki Massoni, our energy manager, is also the energy manager for Wenham. Type for the district, places, right? the school district, uh, and I believe there are other towns um, mm -hmm. she's involved in, so she can help us coordinate and collaborate, and um, that's where the the grant money is going to come in. So we're we're lucky to have her. <laughs> she's really Absolutely. something. We sure are, um, um, Darcy. No doubt about it. And Vicky's been outstanding, I should say. For since I started talking to her in late August, September, she's been on just about every single Zoom that um, the Hamilton Wenham Climate Action Team has been on right, right. Um, for, geez, almost six, you know, six plus months now. And, um, and she's been an incredible resource and extremely helpful. So I can't say enough about all the help she's given us and contacts um, that she's helped us with so far. So we'll keep it going. Yeah, and she's a money, um, she's like the goose that laid the golden egg with all the grants <laughs> applications she, she makes for us. So and the best thing about it, I mean, it's just amazing. She's kind of stealth, but whenever something good happens right with there. green grants, oh, Vicki yep. did that. So she's, she is very amazing. This is Jay Butler. Can I say something? Sure, Jay. I'm wondering if maybe Scott and Robert should take a look at the design for Town Hall. I mean, <laughs> well, actually, the historic nature of the rehabilitation uh, precludes some of these um, initiatives because most of our funding will come from CPC historic restoration. So we have to be very sensitive about um, how far we can go. But I agree they should look mm. to see how far we can go. Mm. And I think that was one of our objects when we were um, on the town hall building committee actively and, working. And I believe Vicky. Yeah, at least the EAC portion. The yeah. And great question, Jay. And Dar Darcy, that was one of Sean's questions that I redlined back to you in my email this afternoon when I sent you that update. You and Rosie, which was, you know, will the will the town hall renovation, will the timeline around that be affected? And I think that's that's it's too early to tell how you know this resolution would play into timelines around materials technology you know zero carbon if there's things we can do today instead of 20 years from now we should do them yes there's a cost to that but i think there's also a, a return on that investment over time as we 
you know, as we as we make the transition from fossil to clean energy over the next 30 years. So, um, you know, great point by Sean. I hope my answer back to him in Redline was yes, there is going to be an effect on the timeline, but we should all work hard to to make that happen if we can. Any other questions or concerns or observations? Anyone? Oh, it's very exciting. Yeah, it is. It really is. Is it is. that time of night? Is that that time? It is that He's time. looking at me. I'm looking okay. at Rosie because I know okay. Darcy wants to do it, but okay. I don't think she can. Oh, no, <laughs> that's right. the chair. Okay. So, oh, okay. So, <laughs> I'd like to make a motion that we adjourn the 2-22-22 Select Board meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? No. Nay. We I guess adjourned. we're done. We're adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.